So it is a huge honor to introduce the man who has inspired this radical and responsible reframing of our industrial story. The next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and the champion of the many, not the few, Jeremy Corbyn. Gee, thank you, thank you very much for that introduction, what you've said and what you do and what you will do in the future to inspire so many people, particularly young women, to go into engineering. We're really proud of the work you've done and the inspiration you've given to so many. You remind me of what my mum told me, girls can do anything, make sure they all do, and she was a science teacher. Thank you, Chi, absolutely brilliant. Can I also welcome Rachel and Luke, our local candidates. Rachel has done such an incredible job as the MP for York. I look forward to working with you in the next parliament. And Luke, good luck on the campaign in York Outer. Lots of surprises away on June the 9th, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all for coming this morning. And before going any further, I'd like to say a few words about leadership. Donald Trump's decision to pull the United States out of the Paris climate change deal is reckless and dangerous. The commitments made in Paris, and I was there, are vital to stop the world reaching the point of no return on climate change. There can be no question of watering those commitments down. The Paris deal should not ever be up for renegotiation, only for strengthening of it in the future. <laughs> the other three members of the G7, the European members of the G7, France, Germany and Italy, have written to Donald Trump this morning to make this very clear. So why does Theresa May not have her name on this joint statement? Given the chance to present a united front from our international partners, she's instead opted for silence and once again subservience to Donald Trump. It's a dereliction of both her duty to this country and our duty to our planet. This is not the type of leadership Britain needs to negotiate Brexit or stand up to defend our planet in an era of climate change. A Labour government would do it very differently. And I'm delighted to be here in York today at this wonderful York Science Park. This is the kind of organisation and institution that we want to work with in the future. We're here this morning and I'm very grateful to the York Science Park for giving us the facilities to launch Labour's industrial strategy with our Shadow Industrial Strategy Minister Chi Onwura and our Shadow Business Secretary Rebecca Long-Bailey. They have done an outstanding job in setting out this serious, comprehensive and radical industrial strategy. A blueprint for a Britain in which no one is held back, in which every region and every nation thrives. Chi and Rebecca are building on the achievements of the last Labour government, whose intervention in 2009 not only saved our automotive sector, but laid the groundwork for it to become one of the crown jewels of Britain's economy with high technology, efficient cars. We will embrace that new technology to upgrade our economy, create new good jobs and tackle climate change. High technology is at the heart of defending our environment and preserving our planet. At the heart of our industrial strategy is our plan to modernise our energy systems to be 60% renewable by 2030. A big ask, but we're determined to achieve it. I'm proud of the work Chi, Rebecca and my party have done. And I'm particularly proud of all those who have been centrally involved in our industrial strategy. The most centrally involved have been two women. That is the nature of the modern Labour Party. Thank you for your work.
In the course of this campaign, I've traveled the length and breadth of this country, almost always by train, setting out the many ways in which a Labour government would change this country for the better. On these travels, I've seen an economy that is grossly imbalanced. Talk to people and you understand the consequences of this problem. London overheats and the cost of living there rises, while communities in too much of the rest of the country have seen their local economies hollowed out, industries decline and stable jobs gone. Right across our country, too many people are trapped in precarious, low-paid work, while a few at the top get much richer. Despite Britain's many strengths, we are not realising our full potential, failing to harness the talent of every region and nation. That is why the policies we're setting out today are among the most important in all of our programme to transform Britain in our manifesto for the many, not the few. Because today is not just about giving people a fairer share of our country's wealth. Today is about tackling the injustices of our society at their root cause and rewriting the rules of our economy for the many rather than the few. No more can Britain try to sustain its economy on the back of growth of the financial sector in one corner of England. Today, we set out a bold vision for a different Britain. A Britain in which work not only pays, but gives people a sense of pride and purpose. In which every individual shares in the creation of wealth, as well as sharing in its rewards. A Britain in which every community in every corner of the country is built on the firm foundation of a vibrant local economy. Only Labour will deliver policies that match the scale of our ambition, investing to create one million good jobs, investing in the skills of our workforce and working with industry to create the winners of the future.